I'm Elizabeth Durazio joining you today from Headrest at 14 Church Street in Lebanon. And this unique place is serving a dire need in our community. We've been talking about their 24-7 hotline for either abuse, overdoses, or even suicide prevention. But today we're actually going to talk about a more comprehensive program they offer with their residential services. So make sure you stay tuned right now as we speak to the manager of the residential services, Tom Howard, and he tells us about this unique way of getting people back on their feet. So thank you, Tom, for all the hard work you do to make this possible. You're welcome. You're welcome. And this is a, another side to things that Headrest offers. In addition to the outpatient services or the 24-7 hotline, this residential program is really a big effort on your part. Right. We, we, we do offer a multitude of services, and probably one of the, uh, in my view, one of the most important services we offer is the residential services. And, and what we are is a, a clinically managed residential treatment facility, low intensity. Um, and what we do is we take um, addicts or, or you know substance abuse just people with substance abuse disorders and I must say too is in a lot of instances they have co-occurring uh, mental health issues and we we have all the trained and accredited uh, people here to work with those those different issues um, but what we do is we take generally take people that have already completed a 28-day program which is well, an intensive um, inpatient facility um, and that there's verifiable uh, at least 30 days of abstinence. Um, so they, I guess, and the point for that is, is that they have their foot in recovery already, you know, to, and they've at least have learned a little bit about what recovery is about. Uh, they come in here, uh, and we have a very evidence-based, structured, um, you know, clinically, we walk them through uh, getting housing, finding housing, finding employment, uh, and we assist them. They, they are assigned a case manager immediately. Um, they see outpatient counselors if need be. They see, you know, if there are, you know, they get diagnosed, if you will, uh, if there's any kind of, like I talked about, uh, co-occurring issues, uh, and those will be addressed. So they're able to see um, an MLADAC or a LADAC <coughs> on a regular basis um, to address those issues. And then they, we start working with them immediately with a case manager to help facilitate that treatment plan. Right. So, the, so the counselor will come up with a treatment plan, uh, and then we have case managers that will walk them through it. And that generally, what that consists of is that they, um, you know, the first couple of weeks they're on a, a kind of a probationary period where we kind of make sure that they're settled down and, th and that they're, um, they, they fit, if you will, and that they're um, okay. Uh, because it, it's very tumultuous when they come from a, you know, 30 days of recovery isn't a lot, and it's not a lot at a long time, so we want to make sure they're okay, and then we gradually help them, you know, and assist them with resources to find employment. Um, and then once that's done, we help them with a savings account. We help them try to transition into the community, and our goal is to have them uh, become functioning members of society, because generally when they come in, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of different issues, you know, whether it be PTSD or, or you know, anxiety or, or bipolar, you know, those issues on top of the substance abuse disorders. We try to address all of those so when that they, they transition out that all of those needs are met. So whether that requires them seeing a psychiatrist or we'll set all that up. And the case management is very intense. We kind of, we, we give them a helping hand, you know, and we help them back into society. We help them find, uh, and there's all kinds of resources in Lebanon um, with the Department of uh, Health and Human Services here in town, listen. There's so many different resources that we can uh, acquire or get for them. So we help them move on. And then once it, and once they leave, we also make sure that the continuum of, of care continues. So we, we look to set them up without patient counseling or what the level of care is, is required. You know, some, some leave here and all they really need to do is maybe go to AA or NA and, and continue in recovery that way. Some of them need a little more structure when they come to IOP, which is intensive outpatient services, uh, or just individual counseling once a week. So we try to determine that before they leave. And then when they leave, make sure that we that is facilitated. And then we follow up. We kind of make you know we check check on them every every two or three months and see how they're doing. So it's a it's a fairly comprehensive uh, program. Unfortunately, it's only three months. I'd like to see a much you know longer period because it, it's you know the, to to come from a, a position of mostly they come in here as homeless and when they leave in three months, you know they're just getting on their feet. So it's kind of difficult. But. In one sense, it is the most important step they can take. 
And the good news is if you're not quite ready to enter that program with the 28 days of sobriety or you're, you guys are at capacity or things like that, you have the resources and ability to get them started, whether it's to get sure. them on the road to sobriety or to refer them to some place that they need. So I want to thank you very much Welcome. for your work. And hopefully speaking to Tom right now has given you some inspiration to help someone you know or perhaps to give to Headrest as they help people regardless of their ability to pay.